chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37 has to do with the dry bones uh, that live again. Amen. But we, we're not going to deal with that tonight. That would take quite a while to even get the foundation on that one. Amen. But tonight we're talking about Ezekiel chapter 36. And look at verse, uh, actually let's go to verse 25. 25 tonight. And uh, uh, Brother John or, or, or Hannah, whoever does this, whatever scriptures you can get, that's fine. Uh, if you can't, uh, don't worry about it, okay? I get to going. Uh, verse 25 of chapter 36 of Ezekiel, about the middle of your Bible. Ezekiel is just before you get to the book of Daniel. And then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I love that. I'll give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of, uh, heart of flesh. And he says in verse 27, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. That means you're going to obey the word of God and you will keep my judgments and do them. You're going to follow God now. You're going to do the will of God. Do the word of the Lord. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I'll be your God. I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. You know what that means? That means blessing. Amen. You know there's blessing in serving God. There's blessing in living our lives for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Tonight I just want to minister a little bit here. Uh, a new heart and a new spirit. A new heart and a new spirit. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the time of worship tonight. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for the testimony of the body of Christ. I just thank you for the special Lord. Uh, praise God. I, I, I I love that song, Lord. It blesses me. I pray your blessing tonight on the word. I pray that you'd help us to minister and, uh, to the body of Christ. I pray for the anointing, the unction, power of thy spirit. Open up heaven, God. Oh, I pray that, Lord, that the spirit of God would just move and flow within my heart, Jesus. Touch these lips of clay, I pray. I'm asking, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray and everybody said amen and amen. Praise God. You, you may be seated tonight, and, and the Lord bless you. A new heart and a new spirit. I love God, and I love the word of God. I'm going to tell you right now. Now, I'm a, I love the word of the Lord. I'm not ashamed of God. I'm not ashamed to proclamate the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed to, to shout to the Lord and to praise him. I'm exuberant in worship. I'm exuberant in praise. But I love the word of God. I love it. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And uh, I, I, I love the Bible. Praise God. And I think we ought to just saturate ourselves with the word of God and just devour the word of God. As we talked about this morning about meditating in the word of the Lord day and night. Amen. Make it your life. Not just something you pick up every once in a while or just on Sunday, but make it your life. Saturate yourself with the word of the Lord, and God will reveal himself to you. Amen. The Bible says his words like a hammer, and it'll keep chipping away at our hearts until we're broken before him. That word knows where to go. It knows how to get down where we live. It might reach in your backyard, your garage, or your living room, or your house, whatever, or your bedroom, or that closet. God knows where you live. The Bible also says here in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, for the word of God is living and powerful. Notice it doesn't say it's dead and weak. It says it's living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the vision of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God's word will get down to where we live. It will deal with our hearts. We want it to deal with our hearts. God's word isn't dead, but it's a living word. It's a powerful word. Amen. We're, we serve a living Savior. You know, God's not dead. He's not in the tomb. He's not in the grave, but he's alive. He's a living Savior. Jesus is the word. Amen. And the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the Word was God. I, I'm thankful that Jesus changed my life. Anybody here tonight been changed by the power of God? Anybody been changed by the power of the cross? Then you've got a testimony, and you've got a voice, and you've got something to say because you've been changed by the power of Almighty God. The blood sets the sinner free. We think we have to have all these other things attached to Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. I'll just be an old-time preacher. I believe Jesus is enough. The Bible said the blood is sufficient in the book of Colossians. I don't need all these other things that you where people think that we have to have. Jesus in this. Jesus in that program. Jesus in that program. I just need Jesus. Just give me God. Just give me the Lord. Hallelujah. For Jesus changed my life. And when God saved me, he took out the heart of stone and replaced it with a heart of flesh. A heart that's tender before God. I talked about a little bit this this morning. A heart that's broken before the Lord. That's what God's looking for. A broken and contrite heart. These God will not despise. Uh, he's looking for a heart that's humble before him. Uh, it, it's a heart that's humble. It humbles itself 
himself before a living Savior, a heart that knows that it needs God. We know that we need the Lord. We're saved and we're born again and we belong to God. But I tell you, every day I walk this walk, I know I cannot make it without the Lord. I need God. I need to hold that nail-scarred hand and I can't make it without the Lord. A, a, a heart that is burdened for the lost, a heart that cares about others, a heart that's after God's own heart. And we know that David, David was a man that was after God's own heart. He loved the Lord. Uh, David, we know, made lots of mistakes. We studied David on our Wednesday night studies at WOLBI. But we know that David had a heart after God's own heart. And he wanted to serve God. He wanted to live for God. He wanted to be obedient to the Lord. You know, I think of the Apostle Paul who wanted to know God and the power of his resurrection. Uh, Paul had a life-changing encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can read Acts chapter 9. And you can see that when he's making threats against the church. And he was on the road to Damascus. And there he met Jesus. Amen. Who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus. It's hard to kick against the goads. And God changed Paul from being a religious Pharisee and persecuting the church to being a man that hungered for righteousness and wanted to see souls saved. How, how is that possible? Uh, uh, you think about that. There's no doctor that can do this. There's no drug that can do this. There's no pill that can do this. There's no prescription that can do this. Paul was threatening the church. He was putting people in jail and putting them in prison for, God, for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and proclaiming the gospel of Christ. But there on that road, he had a life changing. Oh, somebody hear me today. He had a life changing encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And now Paul is preaching the gospel of Christ. Amen. He is preaching that Jesus is Lord. He is preaching that Jesus is the Christ. Hallelujah. He hungered after righteousness. He wanted to see souls saved. And he was so radical for the Lord that they had to put Paul in a basket and lower him outside the wall so he can escape from the religious Pharisees that were trying to kill him. You know what he became? A basket case for Jesus. We can sure use a whole lot more of that. Amen. There's people that are a basket case for other things, but be a basket case for Jesus. I want to tell you something. If you are really serving God, if you really are close to the Lord and you really, you are, uh, that uh, your relationship with the Lord is of utmost priority, that world out there already thinks you're weird. That world already thinks that you're crazy. They think that uh, we're missing a few things up here. No, folks, I'm not missing anything up here. I've got everything I need in Christ. He has changed me. He has washed me. He has sanctified me. I'm justified by faith. I've been born again. I belong to God. And now I can cry out a Father because I have a relationship with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're joint heirs with Christ. Praise the Lord. Oh, but I think about Paul. He labored for the kingdom of God. Paul wanted to know God in a greater way, and he wanted to experience the Lord in his life. And his heart was right, wasn't it? God took out the heart of stone out of Paul, and he put in a heart of flesh. Uh, by the way, is there anybody tonight that knows what I'm talking about? Anybody where God took out a heart of stone, and he put in a heart? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I think of Moses who wanted to see the glory of God. Moses wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't satisfied with just less with less. He wanted to experience the Lord. He wanted to see God. He desired to see the glory of the Lord and God allowed Moses to see the backside of God and the glory of God. He wanted to see the glory of the Lord. And when Moses came down from the mountain, uh, the Bible said that his face shined with God's glory. You know what I'm talking about in that story? His face shined with the, with the glory of God. Uh, praise God. Listen, may we come into God's presence in such a way that the world can see the glory of God shining upon Upon the countenance of the church that they might see God's glory shine upon our faces and I think as we're in these services and we're in the word and we're in worship and we're praising him don't stand in the outer court but come on in to the inner court come in to the presence of the Lord to where the glory of God can shine upon you that when you walk out here that world out there that doesn't know anything about God will know that's something different about you they'll see the glory of the Lord maybe they can't describe it but they'll see something of God upon the countenance of your face, the joy of God will be within your heart and it will flow on the outside. Remember what's on the inside flows on the outside. Amen. And so sometimes God will bless you with his glory just because he's trying to reach somebody else. God may bless you. God, uh, The countenance of God, the glory of the Lord may shine upon your faces because you're going to run into somebody that needs to know Jesus and God's trying to reach that person. The Lord will do that. Amen. God has changed me and given me a new life and God's given me a, a new purpose and God's given me a new heart. A heart that hungers and thirsts for righteousness. A heart that desires the things of God. Thank God he changes the heart. Amen.
Now let's, oh, my beloved, yes, I know. Now let's talk about the heart a little bit here tonight. You see, from our heart comes our response to God. I want to say this again because sometimes I wonder, like, why aren't we pressing in and, and why are we allowing the devil to hold us back and everything? But I want to remember you to remember this. From our heart comes our response to God. From our heart comes our response to God. Amen. I'm going to say it again because I want this to sink in. From our heart comes our response to God. Based on the condition of our heart will, uh, will be our response or our reaction to God. Some people have no desire for God, no desire for the Lord. And I'm not talking about just the people out there in the world, but sometimes it's in the church. People can be religious and have no desire for God, no desire for the Lord. Now, today I did uh, to Teresa Combs' funeral, and so uh, I thought the people were very, very polite, and they were very nice, and I appreciate that so very much. But uh, as I got up there and I ministered in the Word of God, you know what your pastor did. Of course, you know what your pastor did, right? I have My wife was there. She's living proof, but your pastor will always bring the gospel out in the funeral. I'm not going to bash them over the head. I, I'm not going to force them. I'm not going to make them because God's not going to force them and God can't make them. But you know that when we're uh, thinking about death and we're saying goodbye to a lost loved one, there's a lot of people that when they start thinking about mortality, they start thinking about, I wonder where we're going to end up life after this life and what's after this life and so forth. And so I feel like that I have the call and the responsibility before God and also before the people to be able to minister the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But will I minister in the gospel? of Christ. I knew the Lord was with me. Abby, I can feel the power of God. I can feel the presence of God. I can feel the strength of the Lord as if God was saying, keep going, I'm with you. Keep going, I'm with you. Now, there are some people that are open and receptive, and some people were not, and so some people couldn't handle that, and so they walked out, but that's okay. I've, I've had worse things happen, believe me. That's not a problem, not a problem at all, And but you know what I'm just saying is that, is that, is that not everybody is receptive, not everybody believes, but God wants all people to be saved and give them the opportunity to hear and to receive the gospel of the the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to reach all people with the gospel, by the way. I want to, we want to reach all people with the gospel. And so there's a, there's a young man there. And, they, and when I got there, of course, uh, they told me about him. And his name is Kyle. And he was a dear friend, like a stepson or adopted son, if you will, to uh, Sister Teresa or to Terry. And, uh, and so, uh, but you know, uh, I, I, a lot of church folks might not uh, have anything to do with this, but this man was tattooed, tattooed from top to bottom. This is the one that his face is completely tattooed completely. And so it can be a little bit uh, scary if you're not expecting that, wondering about that. But he walked into the room after the service and uh, my wife and I were there and we went up, my wife and I, and we greeted him and we told him that we were praying for him. I know he was struggling. I know he's having a hard time. And uh, we just uh, told him that we are praying for him and that our thoughts and prayers and I pray that God, the God of all comfort would comfort him. And he is very, very, very humble and appreciative of what we said. Now, listen, my friend, that's the gospel. I'm trying to tell you something. God wants to reach that young man. No matter what people have done to themselves, God wants to reach that young man. God loves that person. I promise you, Jesus would have went up to him, and Jesus would have shook his hand, or Jesus would have embraced him, and Jesus would have talked to him. See, the church has become too churchy. We've become too religious, okay? And, and, and so, and they want to run from that, and they're scared of that. What in the world are we scared of? I thought that the Spirit of God burn, lives within our heart. Amen. In the early church, they were bold as lions. Nothing could stop them. Even when persecution came their way, they're preaching and proclamating the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are we scared of? It's like the world can go boo and we go running. No, 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 no. You've got the lion of the tribe of Judah living inside of you. The spirit of the Lord is inside of you. And God wants us as a people, as Christians, as believers, as a church, to show love and to show compassion regardless of what they look like, regardless of what they smell like, regardless of what they've done. We want to reach them because that's what Jesus would do. Amen. All right. Praise God. All right. So we're talking about the heart. And, and some people have no desire for God. Some want God, but don't want to give up their worldly lifestyle. Yeah, that too. So you got people that want to be churchy, but yet they don't want to give up their worldly lifestyle. They want the benefits of going to heaven, but they still want the sin of the world. Some people want to serve the Lord, but they still hunger for the pleasures of this life. Some truly desire to live for the Lord with all of their heart. And I believe I see some of those people here tonight. You desire to serve God with all of your heart. Amen. Friend, apart from the cleansing work of the Holy Ghost, 
Ghost, our hearts are extremely deceitful. Turn to the person next to you and say, your heart is extremely deceitful. That's right. We have a deceitful heart. In fact, uh, I can't trust my own heart. You know that Pastor Mark cannot trust his own heart? I cannot. In fact, in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9, Jeremiah 17 and 9, it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Uh, who can know it? You know, sometimes you don't even know your heart. I know one that knows your heart better than you do. His name is Jesus. He knows all things and he can see his word penetrates our heart and his word. See, God knows our heart and he knows our motive, but we don't. See, God knows what we do, but we don't know what we'll do in any given situation. No one knows except God. He knows the heart. He knows your heart better than you know your heart. He knows the thoughts and intents of the heart. He knows the motives of the heart. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows what you're going to think in five minutes. He knows what you're going to think tomorrow. He knows everything about you. He knows you better than you know yourself. David prayed that God would cleanse him from the ravages of his sin and purify his heart. Listen, Psalm 51 and 10. Psalm 51 and 10. David, part of his prayer is a great psalm, a great study. Created me, he's going to God, created me a clean heart. He'd been hidden, hiding the sin for about a year. Created me a clean heart, oh God. Nathan the prophet smote him with the word of God. Remember that? The Holy Ghost convicted him. Created me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. This is part of his prayer when repenting of committing adultery with Bathsheba, having her husband Uriah set it to be killed in battle. Now I can tell you that David's heart was not right. Without God, we have the propensity of committing the most hideous acts of sin. Do you know that? That's why it's imperative that you stay in church, stay in fellowship, stay in Bible study, stay in the morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday services. Uh, make sure you stay in the Word of God, stay in prayer, because if you drift away, you have the propensity of committing the most evil acts of sin. Realize that. We need the Lord, not just to get saved, but the sanctifying walk of the Lord. Uh, uh, no, no, no. We don't get saved and we do our own thing. We get saved and now we follow him. Listen, the Bible said that you are not your own anymore, that you're bought with a price. The price, the price has been paid, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible said pick up your cross daily, deny yourself and follow him. So, so I want to say this. I, I, don't walk away from God. Don't leave the Lord. Don't leave his presence. Don't leave his word. Don't leave the fellowship. I don't understand how people can leave the fellowship. How can you leave the church? How can you leave the body of Christ? My goodness gracious, if I go on vacation for a week, then I'm out of church for two Sundays, and I come back the second Sunday, and I missed a Sunday, so it's been two weeks between Sunday to Sunday, and I come back, and I feel somewhat disconnected from what's going on at the church. I feel somewhat dis disconnected of what's going on with the body of Christ. God doesn't want you to feel disconnected from him, disconnected from the Holy Ghost, disconnected from the Word. He doesn't want you to feel disconnected from the body of Christ and the church. God established the local church, amen. The Bible said we're the body of Christ, and the body of Christ is all over the world. I know that, but this is the local, local assembly that God has you in, and I'm so grateful, so thankful that God does have you in the part of the body of Christ. But every joint supplies. And so if the foot doesn't show up, we limp. If the hand doesn't show up, we're, well, we can't do the things we could do unless we had the hand and so forth. And so we want every joint supplies and everybody has a part. And so come on. I don't know, my beloved friends. I'm just saying that uh, it's imperative that we be a part of the body of Christ so we can learn and grow and develop as a child of God and mature in Christ. Uh, the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see, God's greatest desire is that his people love him with all their heart. God doesn't want you to love him with part of your heart, not just a fourth of your heart, not just a half of your heart, not just three quarters of your heart, not just seven eighths of your heart. God wants you to love him with all your heart. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5, Deuteronomy 6 and 5 says, you shall love the Lord your God with what? All, can you see that word there? All, Deuteronomy 6 and 5, with all your, do you see that in the Bible there? That's in the word of God, isn't it? I didn't make that up. How about that? That's in the Bible. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with what? All all thine or your heart and with all thy or your soul and with all thy or your might or your strength. Don't hold back when it comes to loving God. Why hold back? Why hold back when it comes to God? Amen. Hey, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, love him with every fiber of your being. Love him with all your might and with all your strength. Uh, love God without hypocrisy. I think, of the, I think of the woman who was married, the woman who bought the alabaster box. One year's worth of wages she bought, purchased an alabaster box. Uh, a year's worth of wages. I don't know how much you make a year, but say you made $35,000 a year. She was willing to spend $35,000 for Jesus. Uh, say it cost $50,000. Say, say that you uh, made or you earned $50,000 a year. She was willing to spend $50,000 for an uh, alabaster box of ointment, of oil, that she might anoint Jesus. You know why that she did that? Because she loved the Lord. That's why she did that. And uh, I know that Judas and the others, uh, uh, you know, they, 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 they said, oh, what a waste and all this kind of thing. And they were kind of coming against her. No, no, Jesus said it was not a waste. She did this because she loved the Lord. 
I don't know why we hold back. Why do we hold back when it comes to serving God? Hold back in worship. Hold back in the word. Hold back in prayer. Hold back when it comes to giving. Hold back when it comes to service. Hold back when it comes to ministry. We ought to give our all for God. He gave his all for us. Jesus didn't hold back when he died on the cross for you. He didn't hold back when he took those nails in his hands and his feet. He didn't hold back when every drip by drop of blood came out of his body for our sins so that we can be saved and justified by faith and redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If God didn't hold back, why do we hold back? Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Give God your all. Amen. Serve God. Love God without hypocrisy. Jesus said that we are blessed if our hearts are pure. Now listen to this. The Bible says this. Blessed. I believe it's in uh, Matthew 5 and 7. Brother John, uh, off the top of my head, I'm just thinking here. Or 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They shall see God. You want to see God? Have a pure heart. Amen. Uh, listen, if we regard sin in our heart, he will not hear us, okay? If we regard iniquity in our heart, God will not hear us. And so sin hinders our relationship with the Lord, and sin hinders us from having revelation from the Lord, okay? So God wants to reveal things to you. God wants to show things to you. God wants to reveal things and illuminate the word of God into your heart and speak to your heart. But if we regard iniquity or sin in our heart, that hinders our relationship with the Lord. It's the pure in heart the desire to live holy. Did you know that? The pure in heart are ones that live in righteousness, walk in righteousness, live for the Lord, but the, they live holy in an unholy world. It's these people who will see God. They'll experience the Lord. God will show them and reveal revelation of his word to them. God will speak to their heart. They will have encounters with God. They'll experience God in their lives. That's right. Who are we talking about? The pure in heart. Blessed happy are they. The Bible has a lot to say about the heart. See, God isn't concerned just with the outward form or performance. No, he's not. He's concerned about the attitude and the motive of the heart, isn't he? Amen. So much of the the fact that when it comes to adultery, Jesus said it's more than just the act. He said this, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in what? His heart. So God, so we think, well, we didn't do the act, so therefore we're okay. No, 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 no. Sometimes the act is committed just in the heart, okay? Uh, that we're, when we entertain that, that's committed in the heart. You see, we all have the capability of having uh, a soft heart or having a hard heart. Sin hardens the heart. Turn to the person next to you and say, sin hardens hardens the heart. Sin will harden our heart. I've known people who once were serving God. Listen, they were passionate for Christ. They loved his word. They wanted to reach souls for Jesus. They wanted God to move in their lives. But somewhere along the way, they compromised and allowed sin to creep into their hearts. Even people that were one time baptized in the Holy Ghost, spoke to the tongue, Spirit of God gave the utterance, and yet they slowly and surely allowed sin to creep into their heart. And so uh, my wife and I are at the funeral today, and there's somebody there that uh, that knows somebody that we know, and that person that, at that funeral uh, knows that we know that person, and knows that person used to come to this church, and uh, they said at one time that person was serving the Lord, and you didn't hear any profanity, and, and uh, they were living for the Lord, but then uh, that person uh, left this church, and I, I still don't know to this day why they left the church. Uh, I tried to talk to them. I tried to write to them. I tried to text them. I tried to call them. I even went to their house, and they wouldn't answer the door, and so I still to this day do not know what really happened. And that person that was talking to my wife and I today said, it's unbelievable. It's like they completely left everything. They left the church. They left God. They left the way of life. They left the holiness. They just left the Lord. And now they're out there mad, cussing, and swearing just like the world out there. They gave up their eternal inheritance. They gave up God. They gave up their eternal life. They gave up everything the Lord had given them. Why would you give that up? And to this day, they're not serving God. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. By the help and the grace of God, I can't go back. I'll never go back. Lot's wife looked back. They told her not to look back. She looked back, turned into a pillar of salt. Listen to me. I don't want no uh, pillar of salt around. I can't go back, folks. God's done too much for me. Jesus has saved my soul. He's washed my sins away. He's filled me with the Holy Ghost. It's not always easy. The devil fights. The world fights. I know it's hard, but I realize, God, if God be for you, who can be against you? The Lord will help you, lead you, guide you. He'll be with you. I can't go back. I thank the Lord. I want to serve God. I want to glorify the Lord. I I want to live holy. I want to live a righteous life before the Lord. Hallelujah. He's done so much for me. He loves me. He's washed my sins away. Why go back? Breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. I said, there's no reason they had to go back. And you want to blame the church and you want to blame the pastor. But no, it was in your heart. You allow. This is what happened. Little by little, somewhere along the way, you began to allow sin into your heart. 
you, you compromise little by little. I didn't know it. See, I didn't know what was going on, but God knew it, and that person knew it. And so they allowed sin to come into their heart little by little to where their heart became hardened. And they're no, no longer receptive to hear or to receive the word of God. That's right. I, I, I've seen people lose the fire. I've seen people neglect God in their life. I've seen people no longer have a burden for souls or a hunger for God. They grew cold and indifferent. They rejected the word of God. I saw, I can feel it. I can sense it. At one time, they loved the word. At one time, they loved God. They're on fire for the Lord. And now, it's almost as if I'm preaching the word of God. And they sit there, and they're not receptive to the word of God. They don't respond to the word of God. They're not taking in the word of God. They rejected God. They rejected the word of God. And to this day, no longer serving him. I've seen the danger of the heart that has turned hard. I've seen the danger of those who have rejected his ways and embraced the ways of the world. It all has to do, listen to this, with the condition of the heart. You can blame somebody else. You can blame the pastor. You can blame the church. You can blame God. No, it has to do with the condition of the heart. Let's just get down to where it really is. Demas. How could Demas leave God? Demas that worked side by side with Paul. Demas that saw miracles took place, and yet, and yet he left Paul. He left the work of God. He left God having loved this present world. So there are things in the world that Demas wanted rather than having God, rather than having the Lord, rather than suffering for God, rather than serving the Lord. There are things in the world that he wanted. And so he left the ministry. He left Paul. He left God. And he embraced the things of the world. Some, some seed fell on stony ground. It didn't take root. And the birds came and devoured it, the Bible talks about. Beloved, there's danger, the danger of a hardened heart. Don't let it happen to you. I've I've seen it happen too many times. Listen, I love you. I care about you. But I must preach the word of God too. And when I preach it, I'll preach it with compassion. I'll preach it with love. But if I happen to preach something and it happens to land on you like a hot potato and you're trying to get rid of it, just know that God's trying to speak a word to your heart. And don't think that I'm trying to attack you. That's nonsense. Listen, if I'm trying to attack you, you'll know it. <laughs> okay? Amen? Amen? Listen, folks, let's just be real. If I'm trying to attack you, you'll know it. I am not trying to attack you. And it's been a long time since I tried to attack anything. Okay, amen. Hallelujah. But listen, there's the danger of a hardened heart. I'm talking about Christians, Christians. You know, the Bible talks about in the Hebrews, be, care, uh, be careful that we have a heart of unbelief. We don't want to allow that sin of unbelief to enter into our hearts. Christians that once believed. See, what happens is sometimes we hear it so much and hear it so much and know it so much that we quit believing it. That's right. We just hear it. It goes in one ear and out the other. When I talk about certain doctrines or whatever it might be, you say, well, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. And sometimes you say, well, pastor has said that before. Therefore, we turn him off like we turn off a radio. But it just might be that there's some things in the message that you've never heard before or that you forgot. Or maybe there's things that we forgot that God's trying to remind us or God's trying to speak to us. Or maybe there's a situation in your life is a little bit different now. And so God wants to minister to your heart in that situation. It's possible for our hearts to become hardened the more the more sin we allow to pass over our hearts and through our lives, the more resistant we become to the word of God and the ways of God. And this happens. Oh, sometimes we don't want to give up those things. And so, and now we've allowed sin to take up residence within our heart. I'm not saying that you're lost, and I don't believe that you can lose your salvation like that. But I believe if it continue a direction that, that way, that time can happen. That can, that can happen, my friend. You see, listen here. You can be sitting here in this church with a Bible in your hand and even have a hardened heart. That's very possible. Perhaps it's not as soft and tender and pliable as it once was. We talked about that this morning with the clay and the potter. We want the clay to be pliable and soft and, and so that God can mold it and shape it and fashion him. Let the potter do the work. Let him de shape in the design that he wants. Uh, and let him put the water, the Holy Ghost on it. Hey, man, we need the Holy Ghost. Oh, how we need the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. We need the Spirit of the Lord to move and to have his way within our services. And we don't, listen, we don't want anything to hinder us. Don't let the devil hinder us from our worship and from entering in and coming to the very presence of the Lord. But press in like our hey, filth of oppression or burden, whatever it might be, whatever the case, you wonder what's going on. I can tell you what's going on. The devil's trying to keep you from receiving the blessings of God for the presence of the Lord. He doesn't want you entering into his gates and his courts with praise. So we got to press in and press through that. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. 
And, and so it's possible that we can have a hardened heart. And, and therefore, the word of God doesn't have its rightful place. And there was a time when God spoke to you frequently, but now we hardly hear from God. It all has to do with the condition of the heart. If you want to hear from God, God will speak to you. In fact, if you'll take your time and you'll open up the Bible and you don't push God and you don't rush God and you just begin to read the word, I promise you the Lord will speak a word to your heart just about every single time. Now, if you're wondering, say, Pastor, I just don't hear anything from God. God's not speaking to my heart. I want you to turn to the book of James and read the entire book of James. I guarantee you that God is going to speak to you in the book of James. Amen. Because the book of James hits every one of us, whether we're young or old or mature or not mature in the Lord, uh, the word of God is going to hit us. And especially chapter 3 when we're dealing with the tongue that's set on fire from hell, he says. We need Pastor James today, don't we? We really do. Amen. All right. So there are those who grow in the grace of God. It seems the Lord is working in them and through them. I talked about this this morning. They hear from God. They're used of God. They mature quickly as a Christian. And it has to do with the condition of the heart. Jesus deals with the condition of the heart. Look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 4. Matthew 13 and 4. And I'm reading from the New King James. And this King James is up on the screen. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 4 says, Jesus said, and, he, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. And what happened? The birds came and devoured them. So the birds came and took the seed. You know, the, the devil, the demons come around and try to pull the word of God out of you because he doesn't want you to receive the word of the Lord. Number verse 5, some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. Verse 6, but then, but when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they went withered away. Verse 7, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Verse 8, and others fell on good ground. Listen to this. Now it's the condition of the heart. And yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirty, and some thirty. And verse 9, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And if your heart is receptive to the word of God, then your ears will receive and hear what the word of the Lord has to say, because the ears are an extension of the heart. The eyes are the extension of the heart. Your cell phone is an extension of your heart. I believe there are Christians who say that they love God and they say they love the word of God, but they have become resistant in their hearts. And folks, I can feel it. I can feel it. I can, don't get scared tonight. Our Sunday night folks are open to it, okay? You, you, want, you want the word of God. I'm just saying I can feel, and I'm like, Lord, I want them to hunger for God, and I want them to have a desire for the Lord, and, and I, I want them to really desire God and really to press in and want more of Jesus. I said, God, why don't they have a hunger for your word? And Jesus says to my heart, you need to pray for their salvation. Just because they're in church doesn't mean they're saved. So I have to preach, I'll preach salvation message from time to time, trying to win with the Lord. Why are they so resistant? Well, because they resist Christ. You tell me this, is it possible to resist the word and not resist Jesus? No. It's not possible. In other words, if you resist the word, you resist Jesus because the word and Jesus are one and the same. If you resist Jesus, you resist the word. You can't say, well, I love the word of God, but I, I resist Jesus. You can't do that. You can't say, well, I resist Jesus, but I love his word. That doesn't work. That's, a, that's an oxymoron. That doesn't work. You can't do that, okay? So that's the opposite. If you love God, you'll love his word. Let me tell you something. You're saved. You'll love his word. I'm going to tell you that right now. Now, I know that other things can occupy our time, and I realize we can have a lot of distractions, but deep down in your heart, you love the word of God, and you want more of Jesus, and you want more of his word. Oh, so I wish somebody would hear me tonight. In fact, some, I can tell you that some people are running from God. They may be in church, but in their heart, they're running from God. I'm talking about Christians. They, they, they only want the word of God on uh, their conditions. They only want God on their terms. And folks, uh, that stubbornness comes from a hardened heart, bad soil, seed falling on stony places. Uh, Stephen said to the religious, why do you always resist the Holy Ghost? Why do we resist the Holy Ghost? I said, we don't want God to have his way. I think we want God to have his way. God, do whatever you want. Amen. Whatever you desire. Whatever you want. Don't resist the Spirit. Don't quench the Spirit. Don't put water on the campfire, so to speak. Okay? Amen. You know the sin of unforgiveness stiffens our heart as well. The sin of unforgiveness. And we as Christians must forgive us. Jesus forgave us. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. I'm almost done here tonight. We can't continue to resist the prompting of the Holy Spirit without becoming hardened against him. If you're constantly resisting God and resisting his presence, resisting the Holy Ghost, resisting the word, then we become hardened against him, exposing ourselves to evil and ungodly influences, desensitizes us to God and his word, and that's what's happening today. There are no filters anymore. All the filth and the garbage that's all in the world you can get on the palm of your hand with a device. I'm telling you. 
It's un unbelievable. It is sickening. It is grotesque. And I'm angry. And I'm mad. Because the world is reprobate. Listen to me. They're letting children watch uh, strip dancing. Strip dancing. Do you understand? Strip dancing with no clothes. No clothes. Children. Children in elementary school. What are those other things they have on there? That the, I forgot what they call them. It is... Drag queens, unbelievable. Listen, folks, we as the church sit back, we don't think nothing of it. We ought to think there needs to be a righteous indignation in the church to where we are so mad at sin and so angry and mad at the devil that will cause us to fast and to pray and to cry out to God and to seek the Lord and wouldn't have to beg you to come to a prayer meeting, but you gather together we begin to pray and to seek the face of the Lord. It angers me. I am mad. We are destroying our children today. We're killing their minds. We're destroying their innocent hearts. Children are being destroyed today by Satan and satanic influence. And because people are being used of the devil and are allowing this to happen, these children need to be stripped away from their parents and put into a foster care home. Get away from people because I consider that child abuse. It is unbelievably wicked. And so we're living in a very demented, dark, and demonized world. I'm trying to tell you. We live in a demonized world. Someone said to me, well, you know, Pastor, and I understand what they're saying. They said, well, a demon isn't on every corner. He is now. Maybe not at one time, but I'm telling you, he is now. We're living in a very wicked, very demonized world. And we as the church don't seem to understand what's going on. And so Satan is trying to destroy children. And they can get anything and all the filth and all the trash without any filters, any boundaries on their device, on their phone, on their iPad, whatever kind of device that they have. It is unbelievable. And the parents are agreeing with the children and taking them to places like this. Representative Marjorie Taylor just put this up on Twitter and showed what happened here. Unbelievable. She says, where is the FBI in this? So I'm not making this up. Representative of the United States, here she is out of Georgia telling us what's going on here. And so there's a fight, folks. There's a spiritual fight and a warfare. It's just incredible, unbelievable. And I'm angry and I'm mad and I'm frustrated and I'm trying to reach people, but yet I find a lot of people don't want to hear what we have to say. They don't want to hear anything about Jesus, and the nation has turned its heart away from God, and the nation has hardened its heart away against God, and it doesn't want to hear the truth, and it doesn't want to hear the simplicity of the gospel of Christ anymore, and even the church is becoming bored with Jesus. So now we've got to have fog machines, and we've got to have all kinds of disco lights, and we've got to always try to entertain the flesh, and it makes it look like something has happened when nothing is happening in the spirit. Just like the 450 prophets of Baal, they were jumping up and down and shouting, making all kinds of noise. They were mutilating themselves and cutting themselves, acting like something was going on. You had one man over there, Elijah, but I can tell you God was Elijah. He wasn't with the 450 prophets of Baal. One man that knew God, one man that knew how to touch heaven, one, knew, one man that knew how to pray and got a hold of God, and God poured out, and God was the one that uh, consumed the sacrifice. Uh, oh, folks, uh, we got to know God. This isn't a time to play. I don't know what else to say. I've been trying to warn and warn the church and tell the church of the times that we're living in. And I believe that Jesus can come at any moment trying to prepare our hearts, make sure that the bride has made herself ready. And God's coming back for a glorious church without a spot of wrinkle, wash the blood of the Lamb, trying to tell the church of, of persecution that's heading our way, trying to tell the church that we have a government nowadays, an administration that's trying to shut down the church, wants to take the Bibles away from them, not just our guns, not just our freedom, not just our rights, trying to shut the church down. They don't want Bible-believing people people walking around because it goes against their agenda. They're trying to do the great reset. They want to be in full control of us. They don't want us to think for ourselves. They don't want us to, they don't want us to, to have a voice to proclaim, and they don't want us preaching against sin. That's right. They, don't, they want us to accept it as if it's okay, so they don't like Bible thumpers like us. They don't like holy rollers like us. They don't like people that know Jesus and live their life for the Lord and call out those things that are wrong and say, that's wrong, that's sin. They say, no, that's hate crime. We're going to find you, and if you preach something like that again, we're going to come and we're going to put you in jail. That is coming next. And nobody believes me. They're already doing it in Canada. Pastors during COVID that said they refused to shut their churches down, got locked up, put in jail, put in jail. And they let them out and they started their church right back up. They went and locked them up, put them in jail again. There was one man, I can't remember his name, pastor in Canada. And he had flown to America, and he's flying around, letting people know what was going on. He's preaching at their churches, letting people know what was going on in Canada. 
was his name? Trudeau? Pluto? Fluto? What's his name? Trudeau, isn't it? He's more communistic than ever. And, and so once that pastor flew back and touched ground in Canada, the police were there to lock him up, put him in jail. And family, wife, kids, pastor, a pastor preaching the gospel. All right. Where are we at? I told you I was almost done, right? All right. And so, and, and so uh, we can't continue to resist the prompting of the Holy Spirit without becoming hardened against him. The nations become hardened against him. The church has become hardened. Exposing ourselves to evil and godly influences desensitizes us to God and his word. And, and so listening to worldly, ungodly, wicked music, for instance, I, 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 I don't know. I, 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 I can't take it. I, uh, they, they, there's music out there, and don't get mad at me, okay? Don't get mad at me. I said, don't get mad at me. All right. Now, listen. I know we can have our own style of music and all these things, regardless of what your style is, whether you like country, whether you like bluegrass, Christian music, whether you like uh, uh, the contemporary, whatever it may be. You know, I, I'm sorry. Bluegrass just doesn't do anything for me. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. Maybe it does something for you, but it doesn't for me. You say, well, I, I don't know about the contemporary songs. Well, some of those do something for me, but maybe they don't for you. Okay, that's all. It's okay. But what I'm looking for in every song, whether it be hymns or whether it be contemporary, whether it be old, whether it be bluegrass, whatever it is, I'm looking for the presence of God. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the presence of the Lord. And there's some music out there that they say is Christian, and I don't feel that sense the presence of God at all. In fact, it quenches the Spirit of God in me. I mean, it quenches the Spirit of God in me. And, folks, I've been in this long enough that I know whether God's in it or not. And I'm, I'm not telling you you can't listen to it. I'm just saying I don't sense the presence of the Lord. And you can listen to what you want to listen to on your time. But here in this church and in this ministry, and, and I think you can see this, that all the music that we play, we really try to bring a, a, an atmosphere of worship in this house. And, 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 and we're trying to, to bring the church to a, another degree of, of worship and praise and, and uh, to be caught up in Christ and caught up in the Lord and caught up in, in his glory. Amen. But also there are times when we feel like we're getting somewhere and then all of a sudden there's a resistance. I don't know why we're resisting. Don't resist. And don't let the devil hold you back. Watching ungodly movies with sexual scenes and profanity, over time our hearts become desensitized. If you allow yourself, well, if you allow yourself to watch that over and over and over, next thing you know, you don't hear it anymore. It's there. It's going into your mind. It's going in your ears. It's going into your heart. And uh, you don't see it anymore. But it's there because we are becoming desensitized. And so now we're accepting that as the norm. It's okay and God's okay with it. When God's not okay with it, God is not okay with watching sexual scenes. He's not okay with profanity. He's not okay with cuss words. Over time, our hearts become like stone and desensitized. We become unreceptive to a fresh word from God. Eventually, we'll become numb to sin. So what do you do? What do you watch? What you read? What do you read? Uh, what, you, what you listen to affects our hearts. What you read, what you watch, what you do affects our hearts. Garbage in, garbage out. And next thing you know, you're going to start thinking like garbage and talking like garbage. And then, and then when you're weak and when you're low and when the devil comes to tempt you, he's going to bring all those sexualizations that you saw in that movie back into your mind to replay it and try to cause you to stumble and to sin and to fall and to fail. Tell me I'm wrong. Because you got a handle on it now, but wait till you're low. You see, the thing is, as I've learned this in my walk with the Lord, that as long as God is protecting me, everything's fine. I feel great. I feel wonderful. But sometimes the Lord does allow that protection to be lower just a little bit. He allows that to test us to know what's in our heart. God already knows what's in our heart. But let me tell you something. If God were not protecting you, we would fail. We would fall. We would stumble. We would give in to sin. And we would do the, uh, the most wicked and evil things. 
God is protecting us. Don't get the big head. Don't think that you're something. If it wasn't for the Lord helping, guiding, protecting you, defending you, I can tell you right now, we would fall into sin. Garbage in and garbage out. When I was in elementary school, they used to have posters up. I don't know if they do this anymore, but a long time ago. How many around 58 right now? How many about 58 years old? 60 years old. You're not 58. Get out of here, you kids. All right, so you know what I'm talking about. They have these posters up in the cafeteria at school, and they would say, you are what you eat. And they'd always have fruit. Man, I always thought they should have little Debbies and cupcakes and Twix. And, uh, man. They always had fruit, you know, trying to get us to eat better. Celery and apples and carrots and things like that. Well, garbage in and garbage out. You are what you eat. You allow that. You watch that. If you watch and listen to garbage, then that's what you will become. You'll become garbage. You'll become garbage in your thinking. And then when you're in church and the preacher's preaching the Word of God, you're not going to be able to hear or receive the Word of God because you got all this garbage in, okay, that's, that's deflecting the Word of the Lord. And so let me ask you here tonight, has your heart grown uh, hard towards God? I sure hope not. Has your heart grown cold towards His Word? I sure hope not. Do you feel as though nothing could soften it? Oh, I sure hope not. Listen, friend, God has a solution, and he'll separate you from the influences that are destroying you, and he'll cleanse you from all filthiness, and he'll remove everything that has taken his place in your affections. He'll remove all that if you'll let him. He'll remove your heart of stone, and he'll replace it with a heart of flesh, a heart that's tender towards him and his word. That's what God wants. That's what the Lord desires. God can do that. God is able to do that, and he will do that if you will let God do that. Be open to the Lord, receptive to God. If your love for God is not what it should be, then ask him to renew your heart. Restore your devotion to him. Amen. Ask God to do it right now. Just say, God, here, here's my heart. Take it and replace it with a heart of flesh, a heart that hungers for you. God, give me a hungry heart for you, a heart that's tender, a heart that loves you without reservation. Almighty God. Hallelujah. Just want to have a heart for God, heart for the Lord. Uh, Sometimes I do like Sister Diana, and uh, I get in my car. I don't know why. I just feel like i got to do this, and I, I'll turn my phone off or i leave my phone at home. I'll tell my wife, I said, you will not be able to contact me. I'm going to go pray. I don't know why. I, I just feel like sometimes I, I have a route, and I know, Sister Diana, you got a route too, and I've got a certain route. I'm not going to tell you because it's my route. You might take my route, and I might meet you on the road. I don't want to come to visit somebody. I've come to visit Jesus. Amen. <laughs> But I, I just, last night, and, and I, I just took off in my car, and, and I, just, I felt the power of God. I felt the Lord, and, and I was just praying, and I was crying out to God, and I was praying for revival, and I was praying for a move of God. I was praying for all the people that were sick in the church, and I was lifting up their names before the Lord, asking God for a miracle to heal them. And I was praying for uh, this, the fresh rain, the form of the latter rain, and God would pour out of his spirit. And I'd pray, I was praying that there would be freedom to worship in the house of the Lord. I was praying that people would come with hungry hearts for the Lord Jesus and just wanted more of God more of his word. I pray that people be receptive to the Lord, receptive to his word and to his presence and to the Holy Ghost. I was praying for revival. And so I was just praying. I was blessed, asking God to bless the church and move upon the church. And I was praying for the backslider. And I was praying for those that once knew the Lord and left God and left the way and they went another way and they're back out in the world. And I was praying for them and I was call, crying out to them. And some of them are your kids or your family members. And I was calling out their name last night. And I felt the power of Almighty God. How many knows an hour go like that when you're praying? I mean, just like that. I mean, caught up in the Lord, you know, caught up in Christ, just praying for a move of God, praying for their hearts to be open to the Lord, praying for the spirit of conviction. I was praying that your lost loved ones would be miserable until they come to know Christ. I was praying they couldn't sleep. I was praying God make their life miserable. I mean, disastrous until they come back to Jesus. Do what you got to do. I mean, are we serious about their soul or not? Do what you got to do. Lord, save them. Save them. Lord, save them. And then I, then I came into Marion. I came into Marion. And boy, I could really feel it. And I, I began to pray over the streets. So then I started driving through the streets. And I drove through downtown Mary, and I started driving through some of the subdivisions. And I was just crying out to God and praying for the drug addict to be delivered and praying for the alcoholic to be delivered. And then I was going by the bars, and I was saying, God, save those people in that bar right there. Save those people in that bar right there. Save those people in that bar right there. And then I got an idea. Then I got this crazy idea. You know, I get these crazy ideas. And I thought, you know what? On Tuesday night, sometimes we're going to all jump in the bus. And we're going to go through and we're going to stop. We're going to pray over this bar, pray over this bar. We're going to pray over this area. We're going to pray in this subdivision. We're going to start praying over. We're going to lay hands. We're going to put, we're going to stretch out. We're going to pray. 
in that bus going downtown. We're going to start praying over certain areas. I went by your business. I prayed for your business. I prayed that God will bless your business. I did. I thought it was a light and a great thing. And I said, oh, Lord Jesus, bless that coffee shop right there, boy. Hallelujah. Pray for that. Amen. I prayed for that. I did. I just, God, give us a heart for you. How we need revival. And then I started praying that the church would start praying. Then I started praying like that. I said, God, the church needs to pray. And I was already mad because of what I saw with that's happening to children these days. My goodness gracious, my Lord, the devil is here. The devil is here. Satan is here. The Antichrist is here. I tell you what, I don't know if the Antichrist is here, but I tell you what, the, the forerunner is here. The spirit of the Antichrist is here. John says there are many Antichrists, but I'm telling you what, it's getting bad, 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 bad. And I hate the fact that my grandchildren will have to grow up in this. Because I feel sorry enough for kids your age. I, I, the, you guys didn't have to deal with any of this stuff when I was growing up. We all knew whether we were boy or girl. We all knew. We knew. We had no problems. Gender wasn't an issue. Okay. When I was going to school, uh, I got to quit. Okay. Uh, just hold on. Just hold on. I got to quit. I got to quit. Not yet. When I went to school, we had, we had buck knives. We brought buck knives to school. We had pocket knives. We had buck knives. You know the buck knife you put on the side of your belt? Man, it was cool to walk around with a buck knife. We had those in classrooms. We had shotguns in the back of our, our car and our car trucks. Kids would come to school with shotguns in the back of their truck. That was just a cool thing because you might be going to school or going home and see a deer and you want to get the deer. You got to be ready. We never thought about shooting somebody in school. Never crossed our mind. We never felt that we were not safe in school. Never had any kind of issue like that ever. And now today they're training us that schools are now going to have weapons because of the disastrous times that we're living in today. We didn't, we didn't have pronoun issues when I was growing up. He, she, you, he, him, shim. I don't know what it is. I don't play the game. I don't enter into that. You are what God made you to be. And the fact is you don't want to accept what God made you to be because you don't want to accept God. And so you're rebelling against the Lord. And the spirit of Satan is rebellion against God. So many people have the spirit of Satan inside of them. And Jesus, that the Bible calls them, Paul said this, they're sons of disobedience. Now listen, oh, oh, that's hate crime and that's hate. And you can't say that. I can say that. That's not hate. That is the truth. We love them, but they'll die in their sins if they do not ask Christ to come into their heart and their life. Okay? So, so very, very important. Long-winded tonight. I've got to stop. God bless all of you. Let's stand. All right? My wife's giving me the look. Jeffrey, you know what I'm talking about. The look. You know what the look is. You better wrap this thing up or you're in trouble. <laughs> these kids are great. Aren't these kids great? Aren't they, aren't they awesome? Amen. That's right. Amen. Aren't they just awesome? They really are. And, uh, and these, young, these young couple right back here, they're awesome too. They really are helpful in the church. And they love to be a part as well. I love these young kids. I love them. And look, we got, we got, uh, we got some young... Madison came tonight and... Uh, What's your little brother, Bryson? Bryson came tonight. They come on Wednesday nights. They want to come to church tonight. I'm so glad you came because Jesus loves you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want my heart to be open and receptive to the Lord. God speaks a word to my heart through your pastor, then receive it. Don't reject it. Don't despise it. Don't get mad at the messenger. But just pray over that and say, God, change me. God, change me. Amen. Change me, God. I want a heart that's pliable. Pray for this world. My Lord, pray. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Can we just come up here tonight and just pray together as we dismiss? I just want to pray together tonight. Just come up here and let's just form a big line right across here and pray for each other. Pray together. Hallelujah. Come Wednesday night ready to worship. Come Sunday ready to worship. Come into his presence prayed up. Come to the Lord. Hallelujah. You're a wonderful church and I, I, I thank the Lord for you. You are a blessing. You are amazing. And I just thank the Lord for you. You don't know how much you mean to me. You don't know how important you are. Praise God for you. Praise God for you. Praise God for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pray with, find someone to pray with tonight. Just pray. 
praise God. Hallelujah. Father, as we come to you in the name of the Lord tonight, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the word. Hallelujah. And Father God, we don't want our hearts to become stony ground. We don't want our hearts to resist the, the spirit of the Lord. But God, we want our hearts to be open and receptive to the word of God. Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord, whether you're speaking the word into our heart that we need to change in some area, let us be receptive, whether it be correction, whether it be reproof, whether it be for instruction and righteousness, whatever it may be, God, may our hearts be open. May we yield ourselves to the Lord. May we be broken and contrite before God. I pray, God, that the soil of our heart would be pliable. Lord, that the seed of the word of God can be planted and take root. And God, it can change us. I pray for the body of Christ tonight. Oh, God, have your hand upon them. I pray for my brothers and my sisters in the Lord. Cause us to have a greater desire for Christ, a, a greater hunger for the Lord. God, I pray for those that are not hungry for Jesus, that they resist the word of God. And it may be because either there's sin in their life or because they're not saved. God, I pray in the name of the Lord that they'll repent before the Lord, that they'll acknowledge that sin. They'll ask forgiveness and fall at the foot of the cross. And I pray that you'll wash them of their sins and cleanse them of all unrighteousness, as the Bible tells us. But God, if they're not saved, if they don't know the Lord, then I pray, God, that they'll humble themselves to Christ. That they'll see their need for salvation. They'll recognize that they're lost and undone without God and that they need eternal life. And I pray, Father, I don't care how long they've been in church. I didn't matter, Lord God. There are a lot of people in church that are not saved. So I pray for their soul. I pray for them that they'll throw themselves at the foot of the cross and say yes to Jesus. Accept you as the Lord and Savior. I pray for the backslider. I pray for the prodigal that's gone the other way that knows the truth but is running from God. That's rejected the word. That's rejected the truth. That's rejected the love. That's rejected the message of the cross. That's rejected the love of Jesus, the gospel of Christ. Draw them back to you, I pray in the name of the Lord. I pray for this nation. This nation is horrific. This nation is darkened and demented. This nation is now reprobate, God. I never thought we'd live in a time like this. But God, I pray in the name of the Lord that we as the body of Christ, as the church living up, will lift up our voices and we will pray and we will fast and we will cry out to God for the lost. We'll intercede for the lost. We'll intercede for the nation. God, we'll pray for those that have gone the wrong direction. We'll pray for those that have backslidden. We'll pray for those. God, I pray in the name of the Lord. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll put a fire burning and blazing within our heart, that revival would come to the church, that you'd open up heaven. You'd pour out the form of the latter rain. I pray, God, that we would have such a love and a hunger and a desire and a zeal for Christ and Christ alone, that we would hunger for the Lord and not for the things of this earth. We will not allow this world that drown out Christ in our hearts. God, I pray for my brothers and my sisters. Touch them, strengthen them. Touch them, Lord. Touch them. Hallelujah. God, help them, strengthen them. And may the church begin to pray again. May the church begin to pray again. May the church begin to pray again, Lord. Oh, God, put it in us. Put it in our hearts. Put it in us, oh God. We need you, Lord. God, let us not cave into the flesh or to cave into the things of the world. Let not our hearts become desensitized because of sin. But God, burn and blaze in us, oh God. Let the spirit of conviction burn in our hearts. We are so burdened for the lost that we begin to pray for the nation and pray for our loved ones and pray for our city, pray for our communities. God, I pray, God, make this work, make this happen in your church and your people. So, Father, God, we give ourselves to you. We yield ourselves to you. We belong to you. We're, your, we're clay in your hands. We're a vessel in your hands, Lord. Use the church of Word of Life Christian Center. Use this church to be a light in darkness. Use our lives. Use us, God, I pray. I thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we ask this tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Jesus, you're so good to us. Amen. Amen. Take this message with you. Take it with you tonight. Chew it, meditate, swallow it, digest it. You can watch it again online. You can get a CD if you want from Brother John in the back. But just, just, folks, 
I've preached thousands of times. <laughs> thousands of times. Don't let the, the birds come and, and rob you, rob the seed out of your heart. Don't let it come and, and take the word out of your heart. Amen. God's word shall not return back void. Let us believe God by faith. All right. Praise God. Lay hands on Brother Clint and Sister Joyce tonight, if you would. Just gather around and lay hands on them. God bless you both. We pray for our brother and our sister in Christ. Father God, in the time of their grief, in the time of the loss of their mom. Father God, I'm asking you that you would uphold them, that you would strengthen them with the supernatural power and the supernatural strength. We know, God, that nothing shall separate them from the love of God. We thank you for the many years that they had with their mom, 95 years. 95 years. Thank you, Lord. So, God, we ask you, Father, to sustain them, to help them, to hold them together, to strengthen them during the service tomorrow, Father. God, I pray that you would touch their hearts. God, I pray that you would comfort them, for you are the God of all comfort. And the same comfort, God, that you have comforted us, we also want to comfort them, for we love them. They are our brother and sister in Christ. Sustain them, Lord, with your supernatural power. Let them sense and feel your presence. Carry them tonight, all day, tomorrow, through the week. I pray in the name of the Lord, your blessing upon them and all of the family. The service tomorrow as well. So, Lord, we commit them to you, Father. Touch them and embrace them. Bring healing into their heart. Comfort them, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. God bless you all. Have a wonderful night. Tell somebody you love them in Jesus' name. Amen. You love them. Hallelujah. God bless you. Women's Bible study tomorrow night at 6.30. Wednesday service at 7. Thursday Bible study for men at 6.30. Tomorrow calling hours. We'll be at Edwards from 12 to 2. Edwards from 12 to 2 for Ruth Pyatt. Okay. Edwards Funeral Home from 12 to 2, Celebration of Life for Ruth Pyatt. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful evening.